All right. In uh, this module, we're going to talk about new types of phases and reactions, and those would be intermediate phases and reactions. All right. So we, um, we've we talked about the eutectic system, and that's the one you see here on the right, or sorry, the left. Uh, it has limited solubility uh, of the two solids. So alpha here, which is the copper component, and beta here, which is the silver component, don't like to mix and form a solid solution, and so they form uh, a mixture of alpha and beta. And so this results from a, a lack of solubility, and that's where you get the eutectic system. However, uh, you can also have a lack of solubility and other outcomes happen, uh, particularly the formation of new phases. So here is an example of an intermediate phase that's formed, right? So we have alpha, which in this case is uh, the pure phase of magnesium, and we have beta over here, and that's the pure phase of lead, and they don't mix very well, as you can kind of see here, because uh, they form mixtures, but there's also a new line here, and this is an intermediate phase because it's intermediate to the two terminal phases. So terminal just means the ends, so alpha and beta. So this is an intermediate phase, and this happens when there's also limited solubility. Um, reasons why something like this might happen is that the two materials are so different, have so different electronegativities and so forth, that it's much like a ceramic in that it forms a new structure. So they like, they're so different, they like to be in specific positions of a, of a lattice, and therefore they form a new phase with new properties, uh, etc. So that's what an intermediate phase is. So this is the example um, of that. And again, um, it's intermediate to the terminal phases. So alpha, beta are the terminal phases, and Mg2Pb are, is, is the uh, intermediate phase. And this one is specifically what we call an intermetallic. It has a specific stoichiometry. So you can see from the fact that it's a line, that means it really only exists as a pure component at this very specific amount. And so that's uh, what we have here. And so uh, in terms of weight percent, that's a little over 80. Uh, and we actually have it covered up up here, uh, but I'm going to guess that it is uh, 66 based on the stoichiometry, right? You can, uh, this is going to be two thirds, this is one third. Uh, and so these 10, if you have a, a line compound like this, what we mean by a line is that it has a specific stoichiometry, which you see from the name. So that's what we uh, kind of showing on, on this one. So intermetallic compounds have discrete and then they have no solubility. So you can't add more lead uh, or more magnesium and maintain this uh, composition. What you see that happens if you change the composition even slightly is if you change it and add more magnesium, you start to precipitate alpha. If you change it and add more uh, lead, you start to get beta right? So you have to have a very specific composition. And that's why we sometimes also call this a line compound. Um, so uh, again, this uh, exists as a line, not an area, because it has that fixed stoichiometry. If we saw an area here, that would mean that the stoichiometry could be varied uh, a little bit. Um, one other thing to note about this diagram is that if we are on this line, and we heat up or cool down, right, from this composition, what we see happens right at point M um, is that we go from Mg to Pb solid to a liquid of the same composition. And if we start with a liquid up at that composition and cool, we get a solid with exactly that composition. So there's no changes in composition, there's no extra phases added, and so we call this a congruent phase transformation. And what that means, it's very simple, is that there's no change in composition. So I go from solid to liquid at that composition. The liquid doesn't change, the solid doesn't change in composition, um, and vice versa. So this is a congruent melting point. And so you can see that it happens at a specific point. We go from one phase to another uh, of just one phase. All right, so again, congruent transformation, no um, compositional change. And I wanted to show you this diagram because this is also another example of a congruent transformation. 
So we see that here. So same idea. If we start with the liquid at roughly uh, 50 atomic percent titanium and this uh, titanium, and I actually don't know what the other component is, sorry. Uh, or sorry, nickel, nickel titanium. So if you uh, cool down from the liquid and go right at this uh, 40, um, 44.9 weight percent or 50% atomic, uh, then you go from liquid to a single phase and therefore the composition will stay the same. So this is also an example of a congruent phase transformation because we keep the same phase uh, or same composition. Um, another thing about this that's similar to the other one, we have an intermediate phase gamma here um, gamma is an intermediate phase because it's in the middle of the diagram here. Um, but it also, you see, has area. So this is unlike the one in the previous slide here, which was a line, right? So what this tells us is that we can be at 50 atomic percent, but it also has some solubility, right? We can add a little bit more nickel. We can add a little bit more titanium, go kind of side to side here a little bit and still maintain the same phase. So there's a little bit more kind of slop or um, flexibility in the structure. It doesn't have to be exactly the right stoichiometry that can be a little different. That's what this area shows us. All right. Another uh, comment here to make is that this is a congruent uh, phase transformation. So if you kind of think of the opposite, something that does go through a compositional change, that would be incongruent. And so that's any phase transformation where a composition does change. So a lot of the ones we've actually already talked about follow that. So think about, for example, this is a eutectic over here. If we start with a liquid of the eutectic and we go down, it goes into two solids, which inherently have to change composition. So uh, a eutectic is a incongruent phase transformation. All right, so let's talk about some other reactions that can occur with these intermediate phases and talk about whether they're congruent or incongruent. And the first one I want to mention is what we call a paratectic reaction. And so you'll kind of notice that it's para instead of eutectic, right? So it's kind of similar name. Uh, but paratectic is a specific reaction where we have a solid, in this case, we call it gamma, or sorry, delta, plus a liquid. So this is at the higher temperature side. So one solid plus a liquid goes to a completely different solid. In this case, we're calling it epsilon. The specific letters don't matter. We just have to have one solid in a liquid goes to another solid when we cool or one solid uh, uh, degrades into a liquid and solid at higher temperatures. And so that's the kind of, this is a paratectic reaction. So if you see this type of reaction, then we know it's a paratectic. And if you want to look at a phase diagram, if we look at the copper zinc, so this is bronze and brass uh, here, then uh, this is an example, and there's actually a, a couple examples of paratectics in the brass system, uh, but this is an example of that paratectic. So above here in this phase region, you see delta plus liquid, as you noted over here. And then right at this point, if we decrease, we see that we have just epsilon, right? So there's kind of a trip, what we call like a triple point, um, uh, a single point in which three phases are in equilibrium, and that's the paratectic reaction because, again, high temperature, one solid, a liquid, low temperature, a different solid. So that's the example of a paratectic system. Um, we've talked about eutectic phase diagrams, and that's a eutectic reaction. Uh, however, there's also something called a eutectoid. So again, kind of similar name. You see the tectic uh, eutectic part, only this time the oid part of this. Um, and what that difference in terminology means is that instead of a liquid going to two solids, we have a solid going to, oops, sorry. Um, we have a solid going to two other solids. So a eutectoid means that we have a solid phase at the high temperature and two other solid phases at the low temperature. So that's the definition for a eutectoid. Um, and we can go back to the brass copper zinc phase diagram and see that we have an area here, which is here uh, on the phase larger phase diagram. And we see that again, we have delta uh, goes to gamma plus delta, which is what you are sorry, gamma plus 
epsilon, which you see down here. So solid goes to two other solids. And so these are all different types of reactions that can occur with um, intermediate phases and just general uh, reactions that can occur in a binary system.